Welcome to Craft School. In this video, we're going to do another crepe paper flower, and this is double-sided crepe. This is an anemone flower. Now, you might remember we have done an anemone flower, and that one is actually really simple. That's a perfect flower for the beginner. I'm gonna show you how to make this anemone flower, which has a few extra techniques, and then we're going to place it on this wreath, which makes a gorgeous display for fall or actually any time of the year. You can also use these flowers to make a bouquet. I'll show you how to put stems on them. So let's get started. For materials you'll need to print your pattern, we also will have this in an SVG cut file. For my crepe paper, I'm using a double-sided crepe, and this is Sangria and Aubergine. I have an extra fine crepe paper in black, and then for my leaves, I'm using this frosted tech suite paper. This is Botanic, Fairway, and Moss. This is a 20 gauge floral wire, and this one happens to be paper covered, but you can also just use regular wire. This is a three quarter inch foam ball. If you don't have these, look for large beads. This will work as well. And then I have a grapevine wreath, and this will be the base for my wreath. For tools, I have a low temperature hot glue gun. We have some needle nose pliers with the wire cutters a black marker, scissors, and then some pinking shears. So I've already cut my leaves using my personal cutting machine. They're very easy to do, and I've cut them in all three different colors, as you can see, to fill up this wreath. So we'll wait till the end, and I'll show you how to curl those. But for my crepe paper, I will only need this section of the pattern. I like to cut these apart, but I don't necessarily cut them out. There's no need to do that. And the only thing that I'm going to need my black paper for is this oval. And this is to cover the ball. Now, technically, if you want to, you could paint the ball. You don't have to use crepe paper. But since I have it, this is a really easy way to do it. Now, you can see it's an oval, but I do have my green lines. So I'm going to cut around the oval, making sure the grain lines match, and you stretch it out, you have a circle. So I have three different sizes of petals, and each one I'm going to need three cuts. Just cut those apart. And my method for cutting petals is pretty simple. I'll take the edge of my paper and place my pattern on top and then trim the width, and then just trim the length. And if you have a good pair of scissors, you should easily be able to cut through three of these double sideds. I did not use very much of this crepe paper for this flower, so you can make quite a few flowers with just one pack of crepe paper. Now, I haven't counted yet, and maybe someday I will, but just know that you're going to use about less than six inches of this crepe paper per flower. Okay, so all three are cut. And the last piece I have is the center. Now again, you're gonna really want to watch that you follow the grain line. It might be kind of a natural thing to put it this direction, but you need it the other direction. So since it's a long skinny cut, I'm just going to use the pattern to measure it out. You can see that it's about right there. I'll hold that up and then use the pattern for the correct width. Then I can save this for the next flower. I can just fold it over and get the same width all the way down. This is a trick I learned when I started sewing. Okay, now indicated on your pattern, it says for one edge to be cut with pinking shears. So I just wanna barely trim the edge off. And this gives it a nice, you know, angled edge rather than a blunt cut, and it makes it look a little bit more natural once you've finished your flower. That's the only time I need the pinking shears. So for the center, before I cut all the fringing, what I'm going to do, I'll use this piece of paper just so I don't ruin my surface. I'll take my black pen, turn it around, and just give the edge a little bit of color. I don't want it to be straight across, so 
I'll give it a little bit of variation. You can probably use paint as well. You'll just wanna make sure that your paint isn't too watery because it will stretch the paper. Okay, and then I'll turn it over and do the other side. Since it's a two color crepe paper, some I'll do with the dark side, the aubergine, and some I'll use on the light side, which is the sangria, just to give some variation. And a few of them in there, I actually used both. I kind of went back and forth between petals. The next step is where you're going to need a little bit of scissor skill. You can also use some shorter scissors if you want to, some little tiny ones that you can control really well. I have to put my glasses on for this because it's pretty tiny. And I want to make my fringe as small as possible. So when you're done, it should look something like this. I think we'll go ahead and make the darker purple on the outside. So I'll place my petals with the dark purple facing up and just very gently stretch the center. The anemone petals are actually fairly flat, so you're not going to want a lot of curve in them. So there's those three. Do the same with the other six. Because I want my petals to lay flat once I've glued them onto the center, I'll just take my scissors and give it a little bit of curl on the tip. And this is really strong. This double-sided is a really strong crepe paper. It's, it's so fun to play with. I think it's one of the easiest crepe papers to work with. It's forgiving and it doesn't tear very easily. So this is a perfect place to practice doing this technique of curling with your scissors. Okay, everything's ready, so let's assemble. I have my 20 gauge wire. Now, if I were making a bouquet or something where I needed longer stems, obviously I'll use a longer wire. I don't need more than a few inches because I'm going to be placing it inside my bouquet, so I'm just gonna cut a piece. Then we'll take one of the foam balls and insert that into the foam. I'm gonna pull that out, put some glue right on the, the, that opening and then slide that wire right back in and let that cool. The black piece that's now a circle, I'll place that right on top. Put some glue around the base of the wire and very gently we want to stretch and try to make the folds really, really light. So if you just do it a little bit at a time, it can look fairly smooth. You'll definitely want it smooth on the top. You know, as you're stretching and pulling, the ends get a little bit long. And to keep everything in place, what I'll do is just twist it around my wire and then open that back up again place some glue inside the folds, and then twist it again. And now we're ready to put this piece on. So if my petals are going to be dark, I want to go the opposite way and do the inside uh, with the light. So I'll start with that. Put a little bit of glue on the beginning, and then place that right underneath the ball. Now I'm going to glue just a little bit at a time so that I have time to roll it before the glue cools off. And I'm not doing it super tight around the wire. It's almost loose. You can see the base there, how it's not tight yet. It will be. We really want the crepe paper just to stick to the layer right underneath it. Then I can kind of pat them down so they're all the same length. And then I'll take my fingers and just press it all together right at the base and let that cool. I'll just fluff that up with my fingers. And now we're ready to put on petals. So now that the center is done, we're going to glue on our petals. And we have three of each size. We'll start with the smallest, put just a little bit of glue right on the tip. And I'll place that curve right underneath the base of the center. Since I have three, I'm going to kind of form a bit of a triangle. And they don't have to be perfect. 
It actually looks better if they're not exact. Then the second set of petals, do the same thing, put the glue on the tip, and then rather than placing them right in between, I'm going to position it so about half of the second petal is covered by the first one, and then it comes to almost a point between this and this. And that gives a nice spacing so that the third petal fits in. So we'll go ahead and do that with all three. You'll want to work in a rotation. So this will be on the left side and then the left side of the next petal and so on. And then the final three petals, which are the largest, you can place those right in between in that gap space. And the only thing that I'm worrying about other than you know the placement is I, I keep them fairly even you know some of them are a bit further in but not so much that it looks very you know jagged on the edge and then the final petal and we're done so if this were on a long stem and I would I wanted to put it inside of a bouquet what I might do is place the leaf right underneath the bloom because that's very common with these flowers so what I would do is I've already pre-cut these. I would take my edge of my scissors and just very gently curl each bit of the leaf and you can see how it goes back and forth and this makes a really interesting shape and then I would just glue it right underneath the bud like this. But since I'm using this for a wreath, what I've done and I've, I've placed all of my leaves on the wreath first, add some glue to the back and then insert this right into the grapevine. This is such an easy wreath to make. I love using these grapevines because it looks great when it shows through a little bit. I could probably add a few more anemones. I just love this color palette. I think it's great for fall and for summer, even for Christmas, but this is my fall wreath this year. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a like, and if you make this wreath or anything else, share it with us by hashtagging on social media, hashtag made with Leah. Make sure and subscribe by using the button below and we'll see you next time.